it's okay so in this session we will be discussing about process synchronization and this process synchronization is very very important because process synchronization creates basics for a lot of subjects i think if you remember in database management system in dbms you have something uh, related to process synchronization this is the last chapter of database management system that we will be studying that chapter is also based on process synchronization and here this process synchronization is also very important when you are going to program because these things that we are going to study it is just kind of a practical implementation in the programming implementation how your different processes affects your program so we will be looking at all these practical implementations one by one and we will be looking at various solutions for process synchronization and after looking at all those solutions we will be seeing which of the solutions is a failure and why they are failure and what are the solutions which are good so in this uh, process synchronization we are going to study various sol solutions like we have a lock variable solution we have a test and set lock solution we have a hardware based solution that is interrupt solutions we can have solutions related to interested variable turn variable we will also study the peterson solution and then we will be studying your semaphores which include binary semaphore as well as counting semaphore and uh, these binary semaphores and counting semaphores they are also implemented in your java so in java when you use the keyword synchronization or synchronize so that the keyword uh, is internally implementing this binary semaphore so we are going to study all the basics related to this how these things are built how these things are created and then we are going, going to see how these things are actually implemented in java so that is a separate part because uh, that java implementation is not required for your examination that is why i am not teaching that but again uh, you can just see the basics that we are going to study everything that we are going to study it is also implementable or it is also uh, the way we are going to study here they are also implemented in other programming languages like dotnet and java so we'll be studying that step by step i think it will answer a lot of your questions uh, and it might be very very interesting for you okay so here the topic is process synchronization now what exactly is a process synchronization can anyone of define what is a process and process synchronization we already know what is a process a program in execution is a process now we can have two types of processes so one is a independent process and second is a second is a dependent process independent process means if the execution of one process does not affect the execution of other process then those processes are independent they have different set of data variables they have different set of programming they have different set of you know uh, sections that they are accessing if those sections those programs are not dependent on each other then this is independent processes and there might be some processes which are cooperative see independent is different dependent is different and cooperative is different okay so dependent if the processes are dependent on each other there is a dependent process and cooperative processes are the processes which are cooperating on some data variables okay let me just give you an example let us suppose that uh, we have a data variable here uh, let us assume this is an account number this is an account okay uh, maybe you have a bank account let us assume that you have a bank account in sbi and this is your sbi bank account now what are the operations that you can perform in this bank account operations what you can do is you can deposit some fund aap iske andar kuch funds ko deposit kar sakte hain or you can uh, you know take out some funds right so you can either deposit uh, you can take out you can close the account you can do online transactions you can do various different things with this account okay so let us assume that we have two different processes you have a process which is used to deposit some money in this account and the, there's a process which can be used to take some money out of this account okay so let us assume this is the first process so what this process is doing it is going to read the balance in the account okay so it is going to take some let us suppose a variable x which stores uh, the balance in this account and then let us assume you want to deposit 1000 rupees here this so it is going to do x is equal to x plus 1000 and then after adding this much amount of money then it is going to do account is equal to x okay that means it is having three operations here the first operation here is the read operation that is read what is the amount of money is present in this account second is some operation which is write operation that means what are the changes that you want to perform on this account and the third operation here 
is your commit operation that means you are going to make the operations permanent so we do three things three operations which is read write and commit so these are three basic operations that you are going to perform okay so let us assume i represent these three operations just like three functions so i represent it like this so first of all you are going to read the balance in this account secondly you are going to write something in this account and third you are going to commit something in this account read means you are going to read the value so which is something that you are going to store in the variable x okay right means you are going to add some money so we are going to do x is equal to x plus 1000 and commit means whatever the value of x is you are going to store that value into, into this account this is your first function which is your uh, deposit function that means this function can be used to deposit some money into this account okay now if you have a second function which is used to take money out of this account so let us suppose this is a function or you can say this is a process p2 now in this again what you are going to do is you are going to read the balance from this account you are going to write something and then you are going to commit so let us assume you are going to read the account balance you are going to do uh, let's suppose x minus 1000 here you are uh, removing 1000 from this account and here you are depositing 1000 from this account these are two different processes these are process for deposit and the, this is the process for withdrawal and here in case of commit what you are going to do is you are going to make account is equal to x so these are the three operations that you can perform now what happens here is let us assume in your account you have around 10,000 rupees this is the amount that you have in your account now look at it carefully now sa carefully dekhna because if even if you miss one line that is going to be a disaster look at this dekho dhyan se let's say, let us assume that we are performing these two operations simultaneously aap in dono operations ko simultaneously perform kar rahe how can you perform it can happen that something someone is depositing some money in your account at the same time you are getting some money out of your account from an atm or a lot of things can happen even in online transactions these two transactions can work simultaneously now let us assume there's a person uh, here and the name of this person is himanshu okay and there's a person here and the name of this person is shalini so shalini is take, uh, trying to take out 1000 rupees from my account and i'm trying to deposit 1000 rupees into this account now what happens is i take this process i start executing this process on the server now this process first of all it is going to read the account balance okay it is going to store this account balance in this variable x isne is account ke balance ko is variable x ke andar store karne ki koshish ki that means it try to store 1000 this variable x is now containing 10000 because account is having 10000 it is now containing 10000 now what happens here is in meanwhile between before executing this write statement your cpu uh, scheduling process jo aapki cpu schedule kar rahi it can be anything it can be a round robin uh, round robin scheduling process cpu ke andar preemption ho jata hai preemption means uh, you are going to take this process out of the cpu and you are going to execute the another process okay now there is a preemption here and this process p2 executes now in this process p2 also it also going to read that this account is having 10000 rupees so yani ki the process p1 also read that account is having 10000 rupees the process p2 also read that the account is having 10000 rupees okay now let us assume that process p2 is also going to execute the line number 2 the line number 2 process p2 to execute kiya so this line number 2 here it says that i'm going to remove 1000 rupees from the account so that means this account this x variable is now going to store 9000 rupees it will store 9000 rupees now what if there is a preemption here cpu scheduling algorithm gave cpu to another process cpu scheduling algorithm ne ab jo cpu hai wo p2 ki jagah par dobara se process p1 ko cpu allocate kar diya hai now in that case what will happen here is that p1 process is also execute going to execute this write statement so p1 ne bola ki in my variable x i'm going to add 1000 that means this variable x will now be storing 11000 ab jo variable x hai wo 11000 store kar raha hai now this p1 process also going to execute this commit statement yani ki this p1 process will write this 11000 value in this account so it will update ki yahan par aapke paas 11000 hai 
and again the CPU is given to the process P2 and P2 also commits P2 also updates this account or P2 ne kya kya? P2 is going to update this account by value 9000 right now you can clearly see after the completion of these two processes aapki jo first process hai, process P1 is also finished and your process P2 is also finished after the completion of both of these two processes the balance in your account is 9000 rupees Aapke account jo balance hai, there is 9000 rupees but which is not a correct value why because is in one 1000 rupees ko add kiya in one 1000 rupees ko subtract kiya but exactly the value should be 10,000 only the value should not be affected but again due to the execution of the statement ki statement ki order mein execution ho rahi hai due to the order of execution of the statement the balance which is represented in your account is not correct right here this is called as a race condition it is called as a race condition what is a race condition race condition means if the order of execution of statements changes the end result then that is called as a race condition now here you can clearly see if this statement will execute first i mean if this commit will execute first and this commit will execute later or you can say last in that case this account will be updated with the value 11000 so in case mein account mein 11000 value show hoti lekin if this is committed first and then this is committed in that case the account will be having a value 9000 right yani ki in statement ka execution ka order kya hai the order of execution of these statements is going to change the end result it can also happen that cpu is first given to the process p1 so process p1 ko cpu diya gaya process p1 is going to execute all these three statements and after this after the execution of all these three statements the cpu is given to the process p2 and then process p2 executed all these three statements agar pehle sirf process p1 execute ho rahi hai uske baad sirf process p2 execute ho rahi hai in that case it is consistent matlab us case mein jo data milega that is correct data right there, there will not be any issues problem kab aati hai there is a problem when you have preemption agar aapke paas preemption hai if your cpu or scheduling algorithm is having preemption then only you are going to have these kind of issues but if your cpu scheduling algorithm is not using preemption it is a non preemptive algorithm then you are not going to have this kind of issues okay so this issues will only occur when you have preemption these issues will not at all occur if you do not have preemption is it clear is that clear as a so basically this kind of issue can be resolved using the help of synchronization methodologies synchronization methods now these two processes are called as cooperating processes ye dono jo processes hain wo ek dusre ko cooperate kar rahe hain these two processes are called as cooperative processes read the definition the execution of one process affects the execution of other process then those processes are called as cooperating processes clear now what is the process synchronization just read it the process synchronization is a mechanism that deals with the synchronization of processes it controls the execution of processes running concurrently to ensure that consistent results are produced so when there are more than one processes they are executing concurrently uh, in your cpu and you have preemption then there's a chance that we are not going to have a consistent result the previous example we have seen that we are not getting a consistent result in that case we are going to use the process synchronization mechanism so that we can ensure that we are always getting a consistent result okay so what is the process synchronization mechanism obviously when there are multiple processes and they are sharing some resources so to avoid inconsistent result we need process synchronization mechanisms now in a process synchronization mechanism we have to identify what is a critical section there is something called as a critical section right critical section is a section which is shared by more than one processes okay uh, just give you an, giving an example in the previous case we discussed about accounts so previous case we have accounts ke mein discuss kiya tha. in that previous case that account thing account was a critical section because there are more than one processes they were acting upon the same data variable or account tha, account was a critical section because there are multiple processes which are working on accounts okay so critical section is is a section of the program where processes access the shared resources during its execution yani ki process jab execute hongi us server jo hamara shared resource hai that shared resource will be called as a critical section okay 
नाउ मेक श्योर देखो क्रिटिकल सेक्शन जो है इट कैन बी एनी थिंग क्रिटिकल सेक्शन कैन बी डेटा आइटम क्रिटिकल सेक्शन कैन बी डिवाइस मे बी यू आर यूजिंग सम डिवाइस विद योर सिस्टम क्रिटिकल सेक्शन कैन बी सेगमेंट ऑफ अ कोड आप एक कोड सेगमेंट को यूज कर रहे हैं मल्टीपल प्रोसेस माइट वॉन्ट टू एक्सेस दैट पर्टिकुलर कोड दैट कोड इट सेल्फ विल बी कॉल्ड एज ए क्रिटिकल सेक्शन राइट एनी सेक्शन विच इज शेयर बाय मल्टीपल प्रोसेस एंड दे आर ट्राइंग टू मॉडिफाई दैट सेक्शन इज कॉल्ड एज ए क्रिटिकल सेक्शन ओके सो just this example for example we have process p1 we have a process p2 process p1 want to increase the value of this count variable and the process p2 want to decrease this value of this count variable now here this count variable here this will be called as a critical section why because both of these processes are sharing this count variable and secondly both of these processes are trying to modify the value of this count variable okay so this is a critical section here so if you see when i do count plus plus count plus plus that is uh, this is the code right when i write count plus plus right count plus plus is a post incrementation operation in any c program in any java dot net program you can use post increment and post decrement now when you uh, break down in a mush, in a assembly language this count plus plus will be something like this we are going to use a move instruction move or a are not comma count we can have increment the value of r not and then we can have move the value of r not in count okay so what are these three values basically count is a memory location count jo hai this will be stored in some memory locations right so when i am going to do count plus plus yani ki jab maine post increment kiya so internally when uh, this will be converted to an assembly language in an assembly language first of all you are going to store the content of this memory location in a register and then you are going to increment the value of the register and then you are going to again uh, store the value of this register in the count correct yani ki even a very simple incrementation statement this is a very simple incrementation statement this can be broken down into three different steps yahan par teen different steps aapke paas rahenge the first step is move instruction and this move instruction means i'm going to read the value of this see look at it carefully focus here so yahan par aapke paas the first move instruction means i'm going to read the value of this count variable which is a read instruction second is i'm going to increment the value of register r not which is basically a write instruction and third is i'm going to store the value of r not into this count variable this is basically commit operation even a single statement that you write in the program that can be broken down into three statements in assembly language and we can have a preemption in any one of between any one of these three statements we can have a preemption here uh, according to your cpu scheduling algorithm you can have a preemption here you can also have a preemption here and you can also have a preemption after this तो आपकी सी पी शेड्यूलिंग एलगोरथम में योर सी पी यू माइट गेट इंटरप्टेड आफ्टर एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ वन स्टेटमेंट तो जो भी आपकी एक असेंबली स्टेटमेंट होती है आफ्टर द एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ वन असेंबली स्टेटमेंट योर सी पी यू माइट गेट इंटरप्टेड करेक्ट इन द सेम वे वेन यू डू काउंट डिक्रीमेंटेशन सो काउंट डिक्रीमेंटेशन ऑपरेशन कैन ऑल्सो भी बुकन डाउन टू थ्री ऑपरेशन फर्स्ट इज योर मूव इंस्ट्रक्शन सेकेंड इज योर डिक्रीमेंट ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड थर्ड इज अगेन मूव इंस्ट्रक्शन सो दिस इज रीड this is right and this is commit so even a single statement which looks very simple which looks a simple single entity of work which is single atomic statement it looks like a single atomic statement when you are going to execute this in the form of a program this can be further broken down into three statement which is read modify and commit okay so fine now look at this race condition we have already seen what is the race condition when the order of execution of statements change the end result then that is called as a race condition now this is again an example of uh, the problem just look at this and try to identify this i am going to give you some time try to identify this we have two functions here we have function p1 and we have function p2 in the function p1 i am trying to do c is equal to b minus 1 and b is equal to 2 into c so basically here c and b there are some shared variables with the initial value of 2 okay and uh, here you can see you can see that a variable b with an initial value of 2 we have a variable b which is having an initial value of 2 and we have a variable c 
So in the first case, in the first program, I'm trying to store b minus 1 into c, and then I'm trying to do b is equal to 2 into c. In the second program, I'm taking a variable d, there's a variable d, I'm trying to store 2 into b into d, and then b is equal to d minus 1. So here, we are trying to modify the value of this variable b in both these two programs. Okay, so obviously this variable b will become a critical section. Now they are asking in this question, the number of distinct value of b can possibly take after execution is. If you are going to execute these two programs concurrently or simultaneously, if you are programs concurrently execute kar rahe hai, so what are the different variable values of b can be there after execution of these two programs. Just try to identify ki b ki kitni unique values ho sakti hai after execution of these programs. Take your time, think about it, how many unique values of variable b can be there after execution of these two programs. Any answers? How many values of unique how many unique values of b can be there? Let us try and see. Dekho, this is your variable b and let us number the statements. This is a statement uh, p x, this is p y, this is the statement q x and this is the statement q y. This is just to identify between these statements. Okay, and the initial value of b is 2. So initially what happened is the program p1 executes, cpu is given to the program p1. See, both of these two programs are trying to execute simultaneously. Just like I say, in Java, you have threads and multiple threads can try and execute at the same time. In the same way, both of these two processes or both of these two programs, we are trying to execute them at the same time. Now, let us assume that uh, cpu is given to the uh, process p1 first. So p1 execute statement px. Okay, that means p1 is going to store the value of b into c. So in, in variable c, I'm going to store the value 1. So that is 2 minus 1 is 1. Now let us assume that CPU is given to the program P2. So P2 is trying to execute the statement QX. So that means in the variable D, the value stored is 4 because initially the value of B is 2. We have not modified the value of V. Here the value of D stored is 4. Now let us assume now the CPU is given to the statement PY. After this statement PY is executed, then the value of B is 2 into C. So value of C is 1, so 2 into C is 2. So this value will now be updated with 2. Now the CPU is given to the statement QY. So QY is trying to do B is equal to D minus 1. So that means the value of D is 4, D minus 1 is 3. So this can be the first case when we execute this statement first, then we executed this, then we executed this, then we executed this. If this is the order of statement, then the end result is going, going to be 3. B is going to store the value 3. Okay. Let us assume the second case. This is a case 2, scenario 2. Let us assume first we are going to execute Px, then we are going to execute Qx, then we are going to execute Qy, and then we are going to execute Py. This is just random order. Because uh, we can randomly execute any one of these two statements and then we can randomly execute these statements. Okay. So what happens is if I'm trying to store uh, implement px, this is the variable b, which is having the value 2, this is the variable c and this is the variable d. So first I'm trying to execute px. px means in c I'm going to store the value 1. Then I'm trying to execute qx. qx means in d we are trying to execute store the value 4. Then I'm trying to execute QY. QY means I'm trying to do B is equal to D minus 1. So here in this variable B, the value stored is 3. And then I'm trying to store is PY. PY is B is equal to 2 into C. So in this variable B, we are going to store the value again 2. So here the value that is stored in the variable B is 2. Here the value stored in variable B is 3. Now let us see, is there any more scenario possible? This is the case number 3. Let us assume we, to, we will execute px, py, qx and qy. First we px and py ko execute karenge, fir hum qx and qy ko execute karenge. So here initial value of b is 2, this is the value of c and this is the value of d. If I try px, px means c is equal to b minus 1. So c will be 1. If I execute py, py means b is equal to 2 into c. So that means b is the value of p will become 2. Then I'll try to execute qx. qx means d is equal to 4 and qy. qy means d is equal to b is equal to d minus 1 which is 3. If I, if I make this scenario, sorry, uh, 
so if I make this scenario, so the last value that is stored in B is 3. But let us assume that we have this case, which is first we are trying to execute Qx, then we are trying to execute Qy, then we are trying to execute Px, and then we are trying to execute Py. Again, in this case, the end result will change. What will happen? This is the value of B, this is the value of C, this is the value of D, initial value here is 2. If I try to execute Qx, that means in D I am going to store 4. If I try to execute Qy, that means in B I am going to store 3. If I try to execute Px, that means in C I am going to store again 2. If I try to execute Py, that means in B I am going to store 2 into uh, 2 that is 4. Again the value is different. Okay. So here the value stored in B is 3. Here the value stored in B is 2. Here the value stored in uh, B is I think 3 here the value stored in here is 4 so basically there are different values okay we can have different values it can assume different values depends on execution of the statements okay so it happens when multiple statements are trying to execute at the same time this variable might get a different value or you know every time it will get a different value correct so let us see how many unique values are possible here so basically we have total of six cases that are possible this is the case number 1 where the value of b can be 3. This is the case number 2. This is the order of execution of the statements. Here the value of b will be 4. Here the case number 3 where the value of b can be 2. Here the case number 4 where the value of b can be 3. Here the case number 5 where the value of b can be 3. And here the case number 6 where the value of b can be 2. So basically b can have distinct values which is 2, 3 and 4. A single variable in a single variable here it can have 3 unique values, 3 different values. Okay, so as you can see the program looks very simple, but again the end result might change. Okay, so here the order of execution of statements was changing the value of this variable. Now here in this case we have to use the synchronization and here the variable b is called as a critical section. The variable b was acting as a critical section. Even if you have a code segment, instead of variable b, you might want to try, you might try to execute a function, you might try to execute a class, you might try to execute a method that can also act as a code segment. Okay, so, uh, critical section. That will be all called as a critical section. Okay, so generally to obtain synchronization, we do two mechanisms. First of all, if we have a process, when a process is executing, it can have some section which is a non-critical section which is not sharing any variables. Isko thoda dhyan se samjho. A process might be having a section which is a non-critical section and then the process before executing a critical section, it should have an entry section. Now the entry section kya hai? This entry section will try and ensure that if multiple processes are trying to access the critical section at the same time, so at time per only one process should be able to execute it. More than one process should not be able to execute this critical section. Excess of the processes is critical section ko execute na kar pay. This is what we are trying to achieve. So when a process uh, want to execute this critical section, first of all it will check the entry section. In the entry, entry section it will check whether this another process is inside the critical section or not. If there is no other process inside the critical section, then it will enter. But if there is some process that is inside the critical section, then the process will stop here in the entry section and it will not execute. But when a process finished executing the critical section, it will go to an exit section by telling, yes, I have done my, I have finished my execution of critical section, now some other process can enter. Yani ki agar process uh, critical section ko completely execute kar chuki hai to wo bahar aayegi exit section pe ye batane ke liye ki yes maine apna execution khatam kar liya hai ab aap kisi aur process ko critical section ke andar dal sakte ho and after this we can go to a non critical section so basically every process here will be having this kind of sections that is a non critical section then we will be having entry section then we will be having critical section then exit section and then we can have a non critical section okay is it clear? Itna clear as of any doubts in this? So this is just a definition of each of these section. I think I've already explained to you what is this section. We have an entry section, we have an exit section. I've already told you these definitions. Now, any synchronization mechanism, any synchronization mechanism that we are going to design here 
इट शुड फॉलो फोर कंडीशन जो भी सेक्राइजेशन मैकेनिज्म हम लोग डिजाइन करेंगे तो वो जो डिसेंक्राइजेशन मैकेनिज्म है वो चार कंडीशन को फॉलो करेगा वट आर दिस कंडीशन द फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन पहली कंडीशन आपके पास है म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन द सेकेंड कंडीशन इज प्रोग्रेस द थर्ड कंडीशन इज बाउंडेड वेटिंग एंड द फोर्थ कंडीशन इज आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रैलिटी एनी सोल्यूशन दैट इज गोइंग टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ क्रिटिकल सेक्शन इट शुड फॉलो दिस फोर कंडीशन द फर्स्ट इज म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन सेकेंड इज प्रोग्रेस थर्ड इज बाउंडेड वेटिंग एंड द फोर्थ इज आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रैलिटी वट आर दिस वट इज अ म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन मीन्स एट ए टाइम ओनली वन प्रोसेस शुड बी इन साइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन मोर देन वन प्रोसेस इज कैन नॉट बी देयर यानी कि क्रिटिकल सेक्शन में एक टाइम पर सिर्फ एक ही प्रोसेस होनी चाहिए एक से ज्यादा प्रोसेस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन पे नहीं होने चाहिए ओके रिडेड द प्रोसेस एक्सेस द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन इन म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूसिव मैनर दैट मीन्स only one process is present inside the critical section at any time no other process can enter the critical section until the process already present inside the critical section completes okay next is progress progress means if there is a process that might want to enter the critical section then the other process who are not trying to enter the critical section they should not stop that process ठीक है देखो लेट मी रिप्रेजेंट दीज थिंग्स टू डायग्रामेटिकली डायग्रामेटिकली आपको ज्यादा बेटर समझ में आएगा देखो लेट इज एज यू दिस इज योर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन ओके सबसे पहले म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन को बताता हूँ इफ यू हैव प्रोसेस पी वन पी टू पी थ्री तो लेट इज एज यू दिस पी वन इज इन साइड दिस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन दैट इज पी वन इज ट्राइंग टू एक्जीक्यूट द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन देन इफ पी टू ट्राइज टू एंटर देन इट शुड नॉट बी एबल टू एंटर राइट right? अगर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन पे एक टाइम पर सिर्फ एक ही प्रोसेस हो सकती है देन हम उसको हम बोलेंगे म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन लेकिन अगर एक टाइम पर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एक से ज्यादा प्रोसेसेस हैं दैट मीन्स म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन इज नॉट फॉलोड सो म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन इज अ प्राइमरी कंडीशन विच शुड बी फॉलोड कभी भी आप क्रिटिकल सेक्शन का कोई भी सोल्यूशन निकालेंगे इन दैट केस म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन शुड ऑलवेज फॉलो क्लियर सेकेंड इज प्रोग्रेस प्रोग्रेस मीन्स सी दिस इज योर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन There are multiple processes. Process P1, P2, P3, P4. Let us assume process P1 want to enter the critical section, but process P2, P3 they do not want to enter the critical section. Now, so P2 to enter करना है, ना ही P3 को enter करना है, ना ही P4 को. They do not want to access the critical section, but only process P1 want to access. But अगर P2, P3, P3, if any process which is not interested in accessing the critical section. इट शुड नॉट स्टॉप अ इंटरेस्टेड प्रोसेस टू एक्सेस अ क्रिटिकल सेक्शन यानी कि ऐसी कोई प्रोसेस जो इंटरेस्टेड है उसको बाकी प्रोसेस स्टॉप ना करें जो कि इंटरेस्टेड नहीं है एनी प्रोसेस विच इज नॉट इंटरेस्टेड टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन दे शुड नॉट स्टॉप एनी प्रोसेस विच वॉन्ट टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन ओके सो जस्ट रेड इट process uh, progress means an entry of process inside the critical section is not dependent on entry of another process inside the critical section ek process ki entry jo hai wo dusri process ki entry par dependent nahi honi chahiye second a process can freely enter inside the critical section if there is no other process present inside the critical section agar koi bhi process critical section ke andar present nahi hai to ek process jo hai wo freely critical section ke andar enter kar sakti hai A process enters the critical section only if it want to enter. अगर वो enter करना चाहती है तभी वो enter करे And the process is not forced to enter inside the critical section if it does not want to enter. तो हमें किसी process को force नहीं करना So if I say progress is followed, progress is followed means all these four conditions should be followed. ये चारों के चारों conditions आपके पास progress में follow होनी चाहिए कौन कौन सी कि अगर एक process enter करना चाहती है तभी वो enter करे वो दूसरे उसको फोर्स ना करें एंटर करने के लिए दूसरा अगर एक प्रोसेस एंटर नहीं करना चाहती तो दूसरे उसको रोक नहीं दो तो दूसरे उसको फोर्स ना करें अगर वो एंटर करना चाहते हैं दूसरे उसको रोक नहीं सकते अगर एक प्रोसेस एंटर करना चाहती है तो दूसरी प्रोसेसेस उसको रोक नहीं सकती और कोई भी प्रोसेस फ्रीली एंटर कर सकते हैं क्रिटिकल सेक्शन में अगर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन फ्री है अगर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन फ्री है तो कोई भी प्रोसेस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन में फ्रीली एंटर कर सकती है एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एस प्रोग्रेस ओके The third one is bounded waiting. 
द थर्ड वन इज बाउंडेड बेटिंग बाउंडेड बेटिंग का मतलब क्या है कि देर शुड बी ए बाउंड ऑन बेटिंग कोई बाउंड नहीं मतलब जो बेटिंग में कुछ ना कुछ बाउंड नहीं होना चाहिए आई मीन टू से देखो इफ दिस इज योर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन करेक्ट मल्टीपल प्रोसेस है पी वन पी टू पी थ्री अपन काफ़ी सारी प्रोसेसेस है लेट एस एज यू पी वन वॉन्ट टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन बट दिस इज प्रोसेस पी टू विच इज है हायर प्रायोरिटी तो पी टू जो है वो क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर कर गया नाउ इफ देर आर न्यू प्रोसेसिज आर कमिंग विच आर हैविंग हायर प्रायोरिटी एज कम्पेयर टू द प्रोसेस पी वन तो ये जितने भी नई प्रोसेसिज हैं दे विल एंटर बिफोर पी वन वो सभी पी वन से एंटर हो जाएगा तो क्या होगा पी वन हैज टू वेट फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम पी वन को बहुत लंबे टाइम तक वेट करना पड़ेगा एज अ रिजल्ट पी वन विल स्टार्व स्टारवेशन ऑकर होगा सो वेन वी आर प्रपोजिंग सम सोल्यूशन दैट मीन्स स्टारवेशन शुड नॉट ऑकर किसी भी प्रोसेस को मैक्सिमम कितना वेट करना है उसके ऊपर एक बाउंड होना चाहिए बाउंडेड वेटिंग मीन्स देर शुड बी अ बाउंड ऑन हाउ मच अ प्रोसेस हैज टू वेट टू एंटर इन साइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज बाउंडेड वेटिंग अगेन यू कैन रीड द वेट ऑफ अ प्रोसेस टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन इज बाउंडेड अ प्रोसेस गेट्स टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन बिफोर इट्स वेट गेट्स ओवर करेक्ट तो उसको वेट उसको जो वेट का एक बाउंड होना चाहिए कि मैक्सिम आपको इतना वेट करना पड़ेगा उसके बाद आपको क्रिटिकल सेक्शन में आप एंटर करोगे ही करोगे सो दे शुड बी अ बाउंड ऑन वेटिंग सो बाउंडेड वेटिंग शुड ऑल्सो बी सेटिस्फाइड ओके एट द लास्ट वन इज आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रैलिटी वट इज आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रैलिटी इज आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रैलिटी मीन्स आपके पास हार्डवेयर के ऊपर डिपेंडेंसी नहीं होनी चाहिए यू शुड नॉट हैव एनी डिपेंडेंसी ऑन द सिस्टम ऑन द मशीन आर्किटेक्चर यू शुड नॉट हैव एनी डिपेंडेंसी ऑन द हार्डवेयर ऑफ योर सी पी यू और हार्डवेयर ऑफ योर सिस्टम दैट मीन्स द सोल्यूशन दैट यू आर गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड इट शुड नॉट बी हार्डवेयर बेस्ड मैकेनिज्म इट शुड बी अ सॉफ्टवेयर बेस्ड मैकेनिज्म आपका जो सोल्यूशन है वो हार्डवेयर बेस्ड नहीं होना चाहिए आपका सोल्यूशन सॉफ्टवेयर बेस्ड होना चाहिए जैसे कि वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज इंट्रप्ट जो इंटरप्ट का कॉन्सेप्ट है वी हैव वी हैव स्टडीड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंटरप्ट इन कंप्यूटर आर्किटेक्चर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो इफ यू डिसेबल एन इंटरप्ट इंटरप्ट कौन सा इफ यू डिसेबल प्री एम्पन ऑब्वियसली यू नेवर हैव अ इशू ऑफ क्रिटिकल सेक्शन अगर आप प्री एम्पन को ही डिसेबल कर दोगे तो आप क्रिटिकल सेक्शन का प्रॉब्लम नहीं आएगा बट अगेन वी वॉन्ट कि हमारे पास प्री एम्पन होना चाहिए वी वॉन्ट मल्टीपल प्रोसेस कैन एग्जीक्यूट साइमल्टेनियसली because uh, then we can improve the throughput of the system then we can improve the performance of the system there are a lot of things that we can improve right so isi wajah se we want ki hamari preemption bhi hona chahiye and with the at the same time we want ki critical section problem be solved honi chahiye me fir se ek baar samjha deta hu aapko dekho when there's a preemption in the system and there's a critical section then we can have a problem of synchronization इफ मल्टीपल प्रोसेस आर ट्राइंग टू एग्जीक्यूट लेकिन अगर आपके सिस्टम में प्रियम्पन हो ही नहीं रहा इफ योर सिस्टम डज नॉट हैव अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रियम्पन देन यू विल नॉट हैव एनी सिंक्रोनाइजेशन इशूज उस केस में सिंक्रोनाइजेशन इशूज नहीं होंगे बट वी डेफिनेटली वॉन्ट कि हमारे पास प्रियम्पन होना चाहिए सो दैट मल्टीपल पीपल मल्टीपल प्रोसेसिस कैन वर्क सैमल्टेनियसली ओके जैसे कि जस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल वेन यू बुक अ टिकट इन आई आर सी टी सी सो इन दैट केस दिस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन प्रॉब्लम इज अ मेजर इशू वेन यू ट्राई टू बाई अ मोबाइल फोन ऑन फ्लिपकार्ट वेन यू ट्राई टू बाई अ मोबाइल फोन ऑन एमेजॉन सो दिस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन प्लेज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन दैट केस ऑल्सो ओके तो उन दोनों केसेज में क्रिटिकल सेक्शन प्रॉब्लम बहुत रोल प्ले करता है बिकॉज द क्वान्टिटी ऑफ मोबाइल फोन दैट इज रिमेनिंग दैट इज अ क्रिटिकल सेक्शन बिकॉज If a mobile phone is there, let us assume it is a uh, Samsung mobile phone. Uh, the Samsung releases a new mobile phone, and everyone is trying to buy that mobile phone. There are 15 mobile phones are left. So, if multiple people are trying to access it, so that 50 number, ki how many mobile phones phones are left, that will become a critical section problem. Okay. So these things should be resolved, uh, and we want ki preemption hona chahiye so that multiple people can work simultaneously. Okay. तो प्रोग्रेस इज नॉट क्लियर तो लेट मी एक्सप्लेन द प्रोग्रेस अगेन प्रोग्रेस मीन्स इट्स वेरी सिंपल कि अगर कोई प्रोसेस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर करना चाहती है तो ऐसी कोई भी प्रोसेस जो कि एंटर नहीं करना चाहती वो इसको स्टॉप ना करे इफ अ प्रोसेस डज नॉट वॉन्ट टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन इट शुड नॉट स्टॉप अ प्रोसेस विच वॉन्ट्स टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज प्रोग्रेस इट इज एज सिंपल एज दैट ओके एनी डाउट्स इन दिस फोर डेफिनेशन इसमें से किसी भी डेफिनेशन में कोई डाउट है तो हमारे पास चार कंडीशन हैं जो क्रिटिकल सेक्शन का सॉल्यूशन हमें देंगी 
मतलब अगर हम कोई भी सॉल्यूशन प्रपोज करते हैं सिंगलाइजेशन सॉल्यूशन इट शुड फॉलो दिस फोर कंडीशन द फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन द सेकंड कंडीशन इज प्रोग्रेस द थर्ड कंडीशन इज बाउंडेड वेटिंग एंड द फोर्थ कंडीशन इज आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रलिटी ओके गुड now out of all these four cases mutual exclusion and progress they are primary i mean they should be mandatory and they i mean they are mandatory and they should be satisfied the first two cases that is mutual exclusion and progress they are 100% they should be satisfied if you are going to provide any solution agar aap mutual exclusion ko hi fail kar dete hain that means your solution is not correct agar aap progress ko fail kar dete hain that means your solution is not working it is not correct so these two conditions should be primary agar ye dono conditions aapki satisfy nahi ho rahi obviously we are not going to check the secondary condition so primary conditions to satisfy mutual uh, to satisfy synchronization is mutual exclusion and progress both of them should be satisfied the secondary condition is bounded weighting and architecture neutrality wo secondary conditions hai because agar wo nahi bhi satisfy hua tab satisfy hua tabhi hamare paas mutual exclusion satisfy ho raha hai lekin agar primary condition hi satisfy nahi ho rahi that means our solution is not correct okay so this is something that is written here so bounded weighting and architecture neutrality are optional criteria they are optional but mutual exclusion and progress they are mandatory criteria mutual exclusion and progress should be satisfied and that is mandatory okay so we are going to uh, we are going to give various mechanisms here to resolve this issue jaise ki sabse pehla mechanism hamare paas hai lock variable solution then we'll be studying test and set lock then there's a turn variable interested variable petersen solution sima force and so on there are much more mechanisms there are a lot of problems like you have a dining philosopher problem and there are a lot of problems like this okay so today in this today's class we are only going to look at the lock variable and we will look at this test and set lock half i mean maybe uh, this test and set lock can only be understood after taking some problems i will explain you this problem today i mean i will explain you this methodology today but after solving the problems only or after solving the questions only you will be able to understand what is tsl okay so aaj jo hamara sabse pehla aim hai hum log lock variable solution ko completely understand karenge aur test and set lock variable solution ko hum log try karenge ki uska concept hum log cover karenge aaj lekin uske baad jo questions hai wo hum kal cover karenge clear okay so what is a lock variable solution let me explain you first what is a lock variable solution what is a lock variable so basically lock variable means we are going to take a variable okay for example we can have a variable which is integer lock is equal to 0 so this is a variable which is storing lock and the value here is जीरो दैट मीन्स इफ लॉक इज जीरो इसका मतलब है क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर कोई भी प्रोसेस नहीं है नो प्रोसेस इज ट्राइंग टू एक्सेस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन बट इफ दिस वैल्यू इज वन दैट मीन्स देर इज अ प्रोसेस इन साइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन तो कोई प्रोसेस जो है वो क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के इन साइड ऑलरेडी है सो वी कैन हैव अ कोड तो हमारे पास तीन चीजें होती हैं हमारे पास एंट्री सेक्शन होता है सो वी कैन चेक वाइल लॉक like this and then we can have lock is equal to 1 and this is your critical section and then we can have lock is equal to 0 this is a very simple code ye aap simple sa code hai jo aap kisi bhi process ke andar implement kar sakte hain now in this code this part here it is your entry section this is your critical section and this part here it is your exit section yani ki if you have any process whatsoever you have a process p1 in this process p1 you can use this entry section you can use this critical section and you can use this exit section in the process p2 you can use this entry section you can have this critical section and you can also have this exit section in the process p3 you can have this entry section you can have a critical section and then you can have an exit section so any process that want to access the critical section we have to use this code to so, pehla code kya aapke paas while lock we are going to check kya koi process critical section mein already hai ya nahi hai agar koi process critical section ke andar nahi hai to hum us wahan par lock laga denge 
और वो प्रोसेस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर कर सकती है और जैसे ही वो प्रोसेस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन से बाहर निकलेगी वी आर गोइंग टू मेक द लॉक एज जीरो अब ये थोड़ा सा ध्यान से समझ रहा बिकॉज दिस इज़ वेरी ट्रिकी अगर ये समझ नहीं आएगा सो आपको कुछ भी समझ नहीं आएगा दिस इज वेरी वेरी ट्रिकी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेरी ट्रिकी लुक एट दिस सो यू हैव इंटीजर लॉक इज इक्वल टू जीरो दैट मीन्स आपके पास एक वेरिएबल लॉक है जिसकी वाली हमने जीरो ली लेट एस एज्यूम पी वन प्रोसेस मॉन्ट टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन तो पी वन प्रोसेस क्या करेगा फर्स्ट पी वन प्रोसेस विल एग्जीक्यूट दिस स्टेटमेंट पी वन प्रोसेस दिस इज स्टेट नंबर वन दिस इज टू दिस इज थ्री एंड दिस इज फोर फर्स्ट पी वन प्रोसेस विल ट्राई एंड एग्जीक्यूट द स्टेटमेंट नंबर वन तो पी वन प्रोसेस चेक किया बाई लॉक अब देखो यहाँ पर लॉक के बाद हमारे पास एक सेमी कॉलन है सेमी कॉलन का मतलब क्या है कि वाइल की जो लिमिट है वो बस यहाँ तक है वाइल के अंदर कोई भी स्टेटमेंट इंक्लूडेड नहीं है इफ़ द वैल्यू ऑफ लॉक इज वन दैट मीन दिस कंडीशन इज ट्रू उस केस में हम लोग यहीं पर रिवॉल्व करते रहेंगे बट इफ द वेरिएबल ऑफ वैल्यू ऑफ लॉक इज जीरो यानी कि उस केस में वाइल की कंडीशन जो है वो फॉल्स हो जाएगी एंड देन वी कैन मूव टू नेक्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इतना क्लियर है इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल प्रोग्रामिंग ट्रिक राइट प्रोग्रामिंग में वाइल लूप एक्सेप्ट ट्रू और फॉल्स अगर वाइल ट्रू करेंगे तो वाइल लूप कॉन्स्टेंटली एग्जीक्यूट होगा वाइल फॉल्स करेंगे तो वाइल लूप फेल हो जाएगा ठीक है अब यहाँ पर वाइल अभी लॉक की वैल्यू कितनी है हमारे पास जीरो बिकॉज लॉक इज जीरो सो वाइल जीरो मीन्स दिस कंडीशन इज फॉल्स सो दिस कंडीशन इज फॉल्स सो पी वन कैन एग्जीक्यूट द स्टेटमेंट नंबर टू तो पी वन क्या करेगा उस केस में पी वन विल मेक द वैल्यू ऑफ लॉक एज वन आफ्टर दिस पी वन विल एग्जीक्यूट द स्टेटमेंट नंबर थ्री और पी वन जो है वो क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर कर जाएगा समझ आया इतना दिस अ प्रोसेस पी वन पी वन ने एग्जिट सेक्शन को एग्जीक्यूट किया उसको पता चला कोई भी प्रोसेस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर नहीं है फिर पी वन प्रोसेस ने लॉक को लगा दिया और जो पी वन प्रोसेस है वो क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर हो गया राइट right? इतना क्लियर है सबको <coughs> अब उसके बाद लेट एस इज यू दैट पी टू प्रोसेस ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन तो पी टू प्रोसेस क्या करेगा वट विल पी टू प्रोसेस विल डू सो पी टू प्रोसेस विल एग्जीक्यूट द लाइन नंबर वन After this, P2 process will execute the line number one. And what is the line number one? While lock, but the value of lock is one. That means P2 process will revolve inside this while loop. P2 process will be stuck inside this while loop. P2 process जो है वो इस while loop के अंदर ही stuck रहेगा. It will be stuck inside this while loop because the value of lock is one. So that means P2 process cannot enter the critical section. Only P1 process is in the critical section. Correct? Now, when this P1 process will come out of this critical section, so if P1 process is critical section से बाहर आ जाएगा, then it will make the value of lock as zero. Again, the CPU is given to the P1 process. P1, P1 executes the line number four. That means P1 made the value of lock as zero. Now, simply P2 process can execute line number one again. and it will say the value of lock is zero then p1 process will execute the line number 2 and then so p2 process will execute the line number 2 and then p2 process can simply enter the critical section itna clear hai itna clear is a basic functioning functioning bahut simple aur easy hai what the functioning functioning ye hai first of all you are going to check the whether kya humne door par lock lagaya hai nahi wo lagaya agar koi process ne door par lock lagaya hai that means the process is still inside अगर डोर पे लॉक नहीं है दैट मीन्स नो वन इज इनसाइड देन आई विल गो इनसाइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन एंड आई विल प्लेस अ लॉक और जैसे ही मैं क्रिटिकल सेक्शन से बाहर आऊँगा आई विल अनलॉक इट्स वेरी सिंपल जस्ट सेम लाइक आप टॉयलेट्स में जाते हैं गो टू अ टॉयलेट राइट मैन यू गो टू अ टॉयलेट वट यू डू दिस इज यू यू गो टू अ टॉयलेट सो वट यू डू इज इनिशियली आर गोइंग टू चेक वेदर टॉयलेट इज लॉक्ड और नॉट You will see toilet is not locked. Then you will go inside, and then you will lock the toilet. You will lock the door. And when you come outside, you will unlock it. Right? Everyone who is outside, they can see whether there is a lock or not. Correct? So this is your lock variable solution. Now my question is: Is this solution working? क्या ये solution हमारी चारों conditions को satisfy कर रहा है? What are the conditions? Your primary conditions are. primary conditions are mutual exclusion bound uh, progress your secondary conditions are bounded weighting and architecture neutrality theek okay? hai primary conditions aapke paas hai mutual exclusion progress secondary condition hai bounded weighting and architecture neutrality it is a very easy solution right 
you can everyone find out that this is so easy solution but is it applicable is it correct kya aisa solution kaam karta hai what do you think kya aisa solution kaam karta hai write down the chat window do you think it is working correctly write in the chat window do you think this solution is working correctly so one student said in some cases it will not work but when will it not work okay pranita said ki it is working correctly okay pranita said it is working i think it is working okay uh, jyoti said it is not progressive progress is followed there is no is there anyone who is stopping in the process anyone who is not in, in, interested to enter the critical section is it stopping in the process i think progress will be followed anyone else okay so basically this solution is not correct this seems a very easy solution but it is not correct it is not working let me prove you how it is not working ye proof ye work kaise nahi kar raha dekho <coughs> let us assume we have a process p1 theek hai now this process p1 executes the line number 1 आपके पास इनिशियली यू हैव अ वेरिएबल लॉक व्हिच इज हैविंग अ वैल्यू जीरो प्रोसेस पी1 ने लाइन नंबर 1 को एग्जीक्यूट किया दैट मींस प्रोसेस पी1 चेक्ड कि लॉक नहीं लगा है प्रोसेस पी1 चेक्ड कि लॉक नहीं लगा है ठीक है दिस इज सेम लाइक दिस इज योर टॉयलेट ओके एंड दिस इज अ प्रोसेस पी1 इट चेक्ड कि लॉक नहीं लगा है करेक्ट नाउ एट द सेम टाइम एट द सेम टाइम देयर इज अ प्रीएम्प्शन हियर there's a preemption in this case there's a preemption a cpu is given to the process p2 now process p2 also execute the line number 1 that means process p2 also checks ki lock nahi laga hai there is no lock process p2 is also checking there is no lock now what will happen both of these two process identified there is no lock right now if again process cpu is given to the process p1 and now process p1 executes the line number 2 because लाइन नंबर वन तो एग्जीक्यूट हो चुकी है ना प्रोसेस पी वन विल एग्जीक्यूट द लाइन नंबर टू इन दैट केस प्रोसेस पी वन विल पुट लॉक इज टू वन सो प्रोसेस पी वन ने लॉक की वैल्यू कर दिया वन एंड दैट पी टू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन पी टू क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर कर गया नाउ अगेन सी पी इज गिवन टू द प्रोसेस फिर पी वन एंटर कर गया अगेन सी पी इज गिवन टू द प्रोसेस पी टू ना पी टू ने पहले ही चेक कर लिया था कि लॉक नहीं है करेक्ट पीटू ने ऑलरेडी चेक कर लिया था द वैल्यू ऑफ लॉक इज जीरो नाउ व्हाट विल पीटू डू पीटू विल एग्जीक्यूट द लाइन नंबर 2 पीटू ऑलरेडी एग्जीक्यूट द लाइन नंबर 1 नाउ पीटू इज गोइंग टू एग्जीक्यूट द लाइन नंबर 2 पीटू विल चेक मेक लॉक इज इक्वल टू 1 पीटू विल अगेन अपग्रेड दिस वैल्यू एज 1 पीटू ने भी इस वैल्यू को 1 एंटर कर दिया नाउ पीटू कैन आल्सो एंटर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन पीटू कैन आल्सो एंटर इनसाइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन सो यू कैन क्लियरली सी देयर आर टू प्रोसेसेस इनसाइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन दो प्रोसेसेस या दो से ज्यादा प्रोसेसेस भी यहां पर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर कर सकती है देयर आर टू और मोर देन टू प्रोसेसेस कैन एंटर द इनसाइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन देयरफॉर द प्राइमरी कंडीशन म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन इज नॉट फॉलोड म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन को ही फॉलो नहीं किया सी द मेन एम ऑफ सिंक्रोनाइजेशन इज वी शुड स्टॉप मोर देन वन प्रोसेस टू एंटर द इनसाइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन लेकिन वो मेन एम यहां पर फॉलो नहीं हुआ देयर आर मोर देन वन प्रोसेसेस कैन एंटर एंटर इनसाइड द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन एट द सेम टाइम इज इट क्लियर विद ऑल ऑफ यू सो लुक एट इट अगेन देखो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग हियर इज दिस इज योर सॉल्यूशन करेक्ट 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 दिस इज द प्रोसेस p1 एंड दिस इज द प्रोसेस p2 and this is your variable lock which is having a value zero ab dekho dhyan se isko samajh mein nahi aaya fir se dekho ek baar process p1 ne while statement ko execute kiya and process p1 check the value of lock is zero that means this condition is false so process p1 came out of this while loop and now process p1 want to execute the line number 2 now at the same time simultaneously process p2 also checked this while statement before process p1 can execute lock is equal to 1 process p1 lock is equal to 1 execute kar pata usse pehle hi process p2 ne while statement ko check kiya now process p2 is also going to execute the line number 2 matlab both of these two statements execute the line number 1 now any one of them can execute the line number 2 okay So let us assume process P1 executes this line number two. So process P1 will make this value as one, and then process P1 entered the critical section. 
and after this process P2 also executed the line number 2 process P2 ने दुबारा से lock value open कर दिया and now process P2 can also enter so you can clearly see more than one processes can enter the critical section at the same time we can have three processes, we can have four processes, we can have multiple processes which can enter the critical section at the same time therefore this mutual exclusion condition is not followed mutual exclusion condition which is not followed okay so that is why this lock variable solution is a failure this solution is a failure okay <coughs> it is a failed mechanism you cannot create such kind of mechanism to solve this problem of critical section so <coughs> Characteristic kya hai? it can be used by a number of processes. It is a software mechanism, therefore implemented in the user mode. It is not implemented in the systems mode. It, it is a software mechanism, right? Third, there is no support required from the operating system. It does not require any special privileges from your operating system. Fourth, it is a busy waiting solution. What is a busy waiting solution, first of all? Busy waiting, okay? See, if someone is knocking outside the door that I want to enter, or what will happen? Knock knock, I want to enter. Knock knock, knock knock. So what will happen? That person is busy in knocking, right? A person is busy in waiting. So that kind of solution is called as a busy waiting solution. Now, if a process is inside the critical section, if you look at it here, if a process P1 is inside the critical section, now if a process P2 want to enter, what will happen? In that case, process P2 will be stuck inside this while loop. अगर P1 already critical section के अंदर है, उस केस में अगर P2 enter करना चाहती है, तो P2 will be stuck inside this while loop, P2 will be constantly executing this while loop. That means P2 is busy knocking that I want to enter. P2 is busy knocking this while loop that knock knock I want to enter. Just like Sheldon, right? In Big Bang Theory हम Sheldon, तो Sheldon क्या करता है? Penning, penning, penning. उसी तरीके से यहाँ पर जो बिटू प्रोसेस है, it is locking this while loop. I want to enter, I want to enter, I want to enter. So constantly it is doing the same, correct? So that is why it is a busy waiting solution. So we can have some solutions which are not busy waiting, but this is a busy waiting solution that the process will be busy in locking. Okay, and then. It does not fulfill any criteria of synchronization, which is which the exclusion is not followed. Primary criteria is not followed, then we are not going to check the secondary criteria at all. So conclusion is it is a complete failure. Therefore, it can never be used. This kind of solution can never be used. Is that clear, sir? Any doubts in this? <coughs> any doubts whatsoever? We have to identify what is the reason of failure. Reason क्या है failure का? Why can why is this solution is a failure? Just try to identify why exactly is the solution is a failure. I don't know. There can be any reason, but what exactly is what is the exact scientific reason why the solution is a failure? Right? Let us try to identify the scientific reason. See, we just viewed it as a vague parameter because जब हम एक program को देखते हैं, program is not the complete in depth. To see in depth, we have to see the assembly code because by your compiler, this program will be converted to an assembly code, right? And that assembly code will be given for execution, then further it will be converted to a machine code. So a processor takes assembly code and for execution it takes it converted to a machine code, right? So if you have a program, program is a high level, it is a huge ab abstraction, program itself is an abstraction, but when you execute it, there is a middle phase which is assembly language, further this assembly language is converted to machine languages. Okay, so you have to check how you can convert this program to an assembly language and then we will try to identify why this solution is a failure in an assembly language point of view. Okay, let us try to identify that. See, when you have a lock variable, it is something like this, while lock is not equal to 0 we are going to make lock is equal to 1 there is a critical section then we are going to make lock is equal to 0 this is the program this is the program right look at it here this is the program now if you convert this this statement in the assembly low code agar aap is entry section ko assembly code mein convert karenge how will this entry section will look like in assembly code what you are going to do is you are going to make load load r not or make it some register load some on this register ri 
the value of lock. We are going to lock the value of this. So memory location of lock. We are going to load the value of lock into this register RI. And after this, you are going to do compare the value of register RI with zero. You are going to compare the value of this lock with zero. You are going to check whether this is uh, this is uh, value zero or not. And then we are going to check jump if non-zero to step one. Jump if non-zero to the statement one, and then we are going to execute. This is the while loop. Right, so this value will be converted to this. And the second statement, which is log is equal to one, this will be called as store the value of one inside this log. So this is how you can convert these two statements. This is just an abstract view. So you can how convert you can convert this program into an assembly language code. And after this, you can enter the critical section. And after entering the critical section, you can also execute the exit section code. So exit section, what will happen? You are going to do store. This is hash one. So store m comma lock with hash zero. Okay, that means you are going to store the value of zero to this memory location represented by lock. So this is something that you can do. But try to see. Look, here what we try to do is we try to see if there is a preemption after this while loop. Right, but in practical purpose, in practical application, jitni bhi assembly language instructions hai, you can have a preemption after every instruction. You can have a preemption here. You can have a preemption here. Your CPU process scheduling algorithm can have preemption anywhere. You can have a preemption here. You can have a preemption here. You can have a preemption here. You can have a preemption here anywhere. Anywhere you can have a preemption. See, let us see how can this be a failure. Dekho. Let us assume there is a process P1, there is a process P and there is a process Q. So, first of all, process P tries to execute the line number 1. So, process P will store the value of the lock in a register in a register. Initially, the value of the lock is 0. So, process P will store this value of the lock in a register R1 which is 0. Let us assume there is a preemption after this, preemption has been and the CPU is given to the process Q. Now process Q will also execute the line number 1. So process Q will be having its own local register. Let us assume the register is R2. Now process Q will also store the value of lock inside this register. Correct? After this, again process CPU is given to the process P. Now process P will execute the line number 2. Now process P will compare the value of register 1 with 0. And it, you can clearly see that process P is storing a value 0. So obviously this result can be verified. This result is satisfied. And if it is, it is not 0, so obviously process P can execute line number 3 and 4. So line number 3, may, this condition is a failure. So process P will execute line number 4. And process P can store value 1 inside this lock. And then process Q can also execute the statement number 2 now because uh, statement number 2 mein process Q ne apne register ke andar value 0 store kiya tha. Process Q can also compare this value and after this process Q can also see ki hamar pas lock ke andar value 0 thi. So process Q can also execute line number 3 and line number 4. Right? So there is a failure here. Why there is a failure? Because after each of these statement, har ek statement ke baad we can have preemption. We can have a preemption after statement number 1. We can have a preemption after statement number 2. We can have a preemption after statement number 3. But what is the problem? Problem kya hai The biggest problem here is that in statement number 1 and statement number 2, aap yaha par bas usko load kar rahe ho, yaha par usko compare kar rahe ho, aur yaha par usko store kar rahe ho. What if, what if we try to do something like this, ki hum log compare karne se pehle hi uske andar 0 ko store kar de. I mean to say, यहाँ पर हम पहले को लोड कर रहे थे, फिर कंपेयर कर रहे थे, कंपेयर करने के बाद हम चेक कर रहे थे क्या हमारा लॉक है कि नहीं है, और फिर हम उसको स्टोर कर रहे थे। What if it happens? कि हम इस स्टोर को यहाँ पर मूव कर दें? We can create a special provision in our hardware, we can create a special provision in our CPU assembly instruction that we can load the value and then after this loading the value we can store some value. But what if we create something like this, if we change it to something like this that we load the value, we load 
R i comma m log. And after this, we store the value store m log. Log in the only value one store kar diya. After this, we are comparing the value of register R i. And then we are jumping if non zero to state number one, and then we are entering the critical section. So, what we have done is we just changed the location of this store instruction. In hardware, we have changed store instruction ki location. Ko change kar diya. Itna clear hai sabko what we have done? We analyzed this is a failure because load, load karne ke bahut der ke baad hum store, ko, store execute kar rahe. But what if load karte hi hum store kar de? Now, will it be correct? Will it be correct? So we'll identify that this is still not correct. Agar aap aisa karenge, tabhi correct nahi hai. How it is not correct? Let me prove you. Aisa kaise sir? Aap aisa kaise kar sakte hain sir? Aap aisa kaise bata sakte hain sir? Aapko prove karna padega. Bilkul prove karenge sir. Dekho. We can prove it. How can you prove it? See. Let us assume that we have process Q P. Process P executes line number one. So process P ka apna ek register hai R1. Process P ne lock ki value ko store kiya which is zero. Then there's a preemption here and we have a process Q. Now process Q also executed line number one. Process Q ka apna ek register hai R2. Process Q ne bhi lock ki value ko store kiya. Process Q ne bhi store kiya ki iski lock ki value hai zero. Okay. Now this is lock, right? This is your lock. Ya apka tala hai. This is your lock. Now your process Q executes line number two. यानी कि प्रोसेस क्यू ने लॉक के अंदर स्टोर कर दिया वन करेक्ट नाउ प्रोसेस क्यू एग्जीक्यूट लाइन नंबर थ्री उसे चेक किया कि इस रजिस्टर आर टू की वैल्यू क्या थी क्या ये जीरो थी यस yes, ये जीरो है राइट सो ये कंडीशन फोर सेटिस्फाई नहीं हुई तो हम लोग क्या गए हमने फोर के बाद फाइव एंटर किया और हम लोग प्रोसेस क्यू जो है वो क्रिटिकल सेक्शन के अंदर एंटर कर गई प्रोसेस क्यू एंटर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन नाउ Again, CPU is given to the process P. A process P ने भी line number two को execute किया. Process P ने already remember उसने already lock की value को store कर लिया है. A process P ने भी line number two को execute किया. A process P क्या करेगा? वो दोबारा से lock के अंदर बस store करेगा. Now process P can also execute line number three, four and five. Process P can also enter. Now you can clearly see process Q can enter as well as process P can also enter. Both of these processes, both of these processes can enter the critical section at the same time. Therefore, even we change the location of these instructions, still we cannot solve the problem. Then we can't solve the problem. So there is an inherent fault. There is an inherent problem which exists and we have to solve this problem. How can you do it? आप कैसे करेंगे इसे हाउ कैन यू सी द इजिएस्ट सॉल्यूशन हियर इज द इजिएस्ट सॉल्यूशन इज टेस्ट एंड सेट लॉक दैट मींस व्हाट इफ व्हाट इफ समहाउ वी कैन कंबाइन दीस टू स्टेटमेंट्स एंड मेक इट एन एटॉमिक स्टेटमेंट व्हाट इफ समहाउ वी कैन कंबाइन देम एंड मेक इट एन एटॉमिक स्टेटमेंट एटॉमिक स्टेटमेंट मींस both of these two sorry both of these two statements should execute simultaneously dono statements ek sath execute honi chahiye और इनके बीच में कोई भी प्रेमशन नहीं होना चाहिए वी कैन क्रिएट अ स्पेशल इंस्ट्रक्शन विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ टी एस एल इंस्ट्रक्शन टेस्ट एंड सेट लॉक इंस्ट्रक्शन विच इज गोइंग टू कंबाइन बोथ ऑफ दीज टू स्टेटमेंट्स टूगेदर तो हम लोग क्या कर सकते हैं टी एस एल लॉक कॉमा हैश वन दैट मीन्स और क्या से टी एस एल लॉक यानी कि टेस्ट एंड सेट लॉक लॉक की वैल्यू को टेस्ट करो और साथ साथ में लॉक की वैल्यू को सेट भी करो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज टी एस एल इंस्ट्रक्शन That is test and set lock. Now to implement this test and set lock, you need special provision from your hardware. Teaser को implement करने के लिए आपको hardware से special instruction की जरूरत होगी. You have to have special provision from from your hardware to implement this TSL. इतना clear है सबको? Any doubts? So obviously, if it is requiring a special provision or special hardware instruction that means it is not architecture neutral your hardware should support this kind of architecture so this problem is not uh, it is not satisfying the secondary condition which is architecture neutrality but again we will see what are the conditions it can satisfy clear as support so what are the characteristics this tsl instructions ensures mutual exclusion mutual exclusion yahan par follow hota hai it is deadlock free it does not guarantee bounded waiting. This problem is deadlock free. I'm not explaining you what is deadlock right now because deadlock अभी तक हमने study नहीं किया है. When I will explain deadlock, जब हम deadlock के concept को study करेंगे, then I will explain why it is deadlock free. 
बट इट डज नॉट गारंटी बाउंडेड वेटिंग ये बाउंडेड वेटिंग गारंटी नहीं करता बिकॉज सम प्रोसेस में स्टार यहाँ पर स्टारवेशन पॉसिबल है एंड सेकेंडली इट सफर्स फ्रॉम स्पिन लॉक विल सी वट इज स्पिन लॉक तो ये जो हमारी प्रॉब्लम है दिस सफर्स फ्रॉम स्पिन लॉक एंड नेक्स्ट इट इज नॉट आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रल बिकॉज इट रिक्वायर्स स्पेशल सपोर्ट फ्रॉम ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम बिकॉज इट रिक्वायर्स टेस्ट एंड सेट इंस्ट्रक्शन तो इसको स्पेशल सपोर्ट चाहिए दैट इज वाई इट इज नॉट आर्किटेक्चर न्यूट्रल एंड लास्ट वन इट इज अ बिजी वेटिंग सोल्यूशन ये सोल्यूशन है आपका दिस इज अ बिजी वेटिंग सोल्यूशन इट इज अ बिजी वेटिंग सोल्यूशन इतना क्लियर है सबको we will see later on uh, how can you prove it is mutually exclusive we will see what is the spin lock ye sab cheeze hum log dekhenge itna clear hai any doubts in this <coughs> any doubts any other about the pratibha ke sir ko any doubt hai to please ask good I hope it's not clear here. So what we will be doing is we will continue this class tomorrow. So tomorrow what I'll do is I'll prepare some PPTs in advance. So the test and set lock, which problems are, I will take some example problems. And on problems, I will explain you what is this test and set set lock. How can you implement it with the help of a program? So so which way can implement it? Can we will continue tomorrow. So tomorrow will be your class. So just want to know right now how many of you are comfortable by for attending the class at 5 p.m. Because we were class 6 p.m. start करे थे. हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर कम्फर्टेबल फॉर फाइव पी एम क्लास पाँच बजे की क्लास के लिए कितने लोग कम्फर्टेबल है वी कैन स्टार्ट द क्लास एट फाइव पी एम टूमारो एंड वी कैन फिनिश एट टेन थर्टी और इलेवन येस इट विल भी क्लियर डोंट वरी वी हैव आई टेक लॉट ऑफ एग्जाम्पल्स मेरे पास एग्जाम्पल्स हैं मुझे बहुत सारे एग्जाम्पल्स हैं विद हेल्प ऑफ दो एग्जाम्पल्स इट विल भी क्लियर गुड आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर अवेलेबल एट फाइव पी एम सो टूमारो विल हैव क्लास फ्रॉम फाइव पी एम ऑनवर्ड्स सो वी विल कंटिन्यू आर क्लास फ्रॉम फाइव पी एम सो फाइव पी एम टू टेन पी एम विल भी टूमारोज टाइमिंग ठीक है चलो हैव अ गुड नाइट टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड विल मीट टूमारो टेक केयर मे बी फाइव टू इलेवन वी विल डू और फाइव टू टेन वी विल डू वी विल हैव अ लॉन्ग क्लास टूमारो ओके गुड नाइट टेक केयर